Hi, everyone, and welcome to another installment of the Halo implementation series. Uh, with me today, uh, you know what I'm going to say if you're um, uh, you know, a follower of the channel. With me today, I have my favorite person at Halo. Uh, I have Mr. Halo himself, and I know that he's, his head's getting bigger and bigger every time. So, um, hey, Morgan, how are you doing? And uh, yeah, how's, how's things with you? Hello again. How are you doing, Chris? Good, thanks. Just uh, just giving you a bit of a scratch. Um, oh, I, <laughs> I know I know you love it, mate. So um, today we're going to talk about the stock control system in Halo. We're going to talk about all things stock. Um, you know what is a stock location? How to um, you know stock non serialized products, serialized products, all that kind of good stuff. Um, we depending on how we go with time, we may do this over a couple of videos. Um, but we'll you know we'll let you know um, as we're working through this. You know when when we do the second video um, and then you you can uh, watch it from there. So yeah, just thought it would be good to kind of go through everything you know about stock and uh, and talk to mm -hmm. us about how Halo handles that. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's probably one of the uh, less well understood areas of the platform. So hopefully uh, the community will get a lot of benefit from the, the upcoming sessions that we do around this. Just like I did with the uh, the billing, uh, particularly the recurring invoices, the process that I'm going to follow today is uh, we're going to start off with the most basic example, uh, looking at non-serialized products and sort of work our way up in complexity. Uh, so first things first, we're talking about stock. Obviously, where do we keep stock in Halo? Where What is a stock location? So... A stock location in Halo is simply a site that is marked as a stock location, uh, which is just this option on the right hand side here. So uh, the sites in Halo that are marked as stock locations are the, the places where stock is going to be able to be held. Um, now, the, this option and all of the other options associated to uh, stock control inside of Halo uh, are all enabled via the configuration panel, where in here we have our items and stock control module, and then right at the top here, we've got our track stock levels. Yeah. So I was just going to add to that. So, yeah, you know, as an MSP, your stock location is probably going to be in your own company, right? So you would just have a location within your own company to be um, a stock location. Cool. Um, so, I mean, that's where stock is held. The other aspect is uh, what is what is being held. Uh, and to find out what is being held, we go to our products section, where provided we have our stock control enabled, uh, we'll be able to find against our products a few options. So. Got a couple of options at the top here. Firstly, the option to receive stock. Uh, we'll be able to transfer stock from one stock location to another, uh, adjust stock quantities via a stock take. Uh, and we've also got a couple of tabs down here as well, uh, namely our stock and our stock history. So let me start off by receiving some uh, ethernet cables, which I'll do by clicking receive stock, where I put my quantity, uh, the cost for receiving those, any notes that I wanted to add in as well and the stock location that I am bringing the ethernet cables into, where in here we have the collection of sites that are marked as stock locations. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll also see when we're receiving stock and uh, more generally, when we're manipulating stock throughout Halo, uh, that we have the, uh, the current quantity in stock against the respective locations. So let me receive some in there. Um, and now if I go over to my stock tab, where, uh, uh, where we're showing a sort of high level overview of the, the stock currently in Halo, uh, we'll see that we currently got five in stock and those five are against the warehouse site um, as I just received them there. Uh, so next option at the top is stock transfer, where of course we are taking uh, the stock from one location to another. So let's take uh, two cables from the warehouse and then put them into our stock room, just like so. And now you can see that's updated our stock tab uh, to denote the transfer of stock there from the warehouse to the stock room. And then also uh, we have our stock history tab, which is a complete audit of 
all of the stock man manipulations uh, for this product over time. Mm -hmm. So here we can see the five that I've just added in, uh, the two that I removed from the uh, from the warehouse. Uh, oh, sorry, the two that I removed from the stock room and uh, put into the warehouse in there. And then finally, we have our stock take option at the top uh, where I can simply adjust the stock quantity for uh, the products within a given stock location. Just like so. And then and you can also see our stock history tab has updated to denote that uh, we've just taken those three out of the warehouse. Yeah. And really straightforward. That's pretty much uh, all there is to the, the most basic sense of stock management inside of Halo. Uh, the next level in complexity that I want to discuss is uh, managing stock for serialized products. So, um, this is where the relationship between products and assets come into play in Halo. So, um, notice how against our Ethernet cable here, we have this linked asset type for serialized assets, uh, and the option selected here is not serialized. So, this is how we denote a product in Halo PSA as being a non-serialized product. Uh, it is by specifying this option as not serialized. Mm -hmm. And before, I, so sorry. I was going to say, while you're doing that, just for you know, um, uh, you know, our viewers who who might not quite understand that, just to just to kind of explain that a little bit further, um, you, you know, this is if you've got items that you're keeping in stock that you require a serial number for, so that you know how many serial numbers you you have of that particular item in stock, but also means when you then take that item out of stock, you can also choose which serial number you're taking out rather than just, you know, box number one of that particular router or switch, I'm taking out, you know, router one, two, three, four, five, and that specific serial number is coming out of stock. Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, doesn't really matter which HDMI cable you give a customer, but it probably matters which laptop you give them. So yeah, yeah that's where the distinction um, comes in. Yeah, thanks for that. Okay, so if we if we go to our serialized products group now and we look at laptop, for example, we see that the linked asset type here, in this case, is laptop. So the options that we have in this dropdown are all of our asset types, where uh, as long as we're not picking not serialized, as long as we're actually picking an asset type, we're effectively saying that this product is a serialized product. And uh, the analogy that I like to draw here is, um, you imagine you have a phone shop, you sell, you just sell iPhone 12s. You've got hundred iPhone 12s in the back office and someone comes in and they want an iPhone 12. And um, you'll go into the back office and uh, the instance of, uh, b before they come in, you've just got hundred iPhone 12s. It doesn't necessarily matter which one is which but when someone comes into the shop and they say i want an iphone 12 you go into the back office and you pick an iphone 12 off the shelf you scan the the imei or you scan the serial number of that iphone and you sell that iphone to that customer and um, which means obviously at some point in the future if they come back and say that the iphone's broken or needs repairing or whatever and um, you can ensure that the iphone that they're bringing in that they're saying needs repairing is actually the one that you sold them and um, and to sort of uh, wrap that into just a, a one-liner, I like to call assets instances of products in Halo PSA. So the product is something that you would put on a quote uh, in a sales order that doesn't have a serial number at that point. But then once you have uh, actually delivered that product to the customer, uh, you're then going to want to track that instance of that product. And doing so would be done so via an asset in Halo. So let's have a look at uh, how that actually works in practice. So we'll, um, we'll use the laptop example here. We've got our linked asset type as laptop. Save this. Um, and I'm going to very briefly check an area of configuration. So go into config and into items of stock control. Um, and what I was gonna check is this option directly below tracking stock levels. 
Um, and this is saying, at what point do we actually want to create an asset in Halo? Uh, and there's two options in here, when stock is added and when items are consigned or when items are consigned. Uh, when stock is added means that as soon as you receive stock for a serialized product, it will create uh, the quantity of assets based on the quantity you're receiving um, of the given type. Yeah. If you instead pick when items are consigned, the asset will not be created in Halo. You won't have the option to create the asset in Halo until the product has been consigned slash delivered to the customer. So uh, this depends on whether or not you want to track those assets in your warehouse or you only want to create the assets once they have been delivered to the customer location. Um, for now, I'm going to do when stock is added because what that is going to allow me to do is go into the laptop product. Receive stock, we'll just receive one this time uh, into the warehouse. Where at this point, I have this uh, window pop open for me where I can input uh, my asset tag and my serial number. And, and we have a message to the right of those details specifying whether or not uh, a new asset will be created or if you're entering details uh, of an existing asset in the system, at which point it would say, you can't do that. Um, this asset already exists. Yeah. Save that. Um, again, notice that we have all of the, the same options at the top here, receive stock, transfer stock, take uh, do a stock, perform a stock take. Um, We've also got our stock tab, again, uh, denoting that we've got our currently one in stock against the warehouse. We've got our stock history. Uh, and uh, in addition to everything that we saw with our non-serialized products, what we see for our serialized products is this additional assets tab, where uh, we can now see all of the assets that have been created from stock additions of our laptop product. Cool. Yeah, um, that makes sense. And and I guess and and here as well, I think there's a there's a big distinction between assets and and stock. And I think a lot of people get confused with this. And 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 generally, you know, stock is something that you keep in stock in your warehouse, whatever, ready to sell to your customer. And once you've sold it, or in this case, consigned it to your customer, um, well, depending what option you pick in there. But if you then sold it and consigned it to your customer. It's at that point that it then becomes an asset on the customer's side because it then becomes an asset that that customer now owns because you've sold it to them. So this is just allowing us to kind of say, well, you know, when I sell this to the customer, then it becomes an, it becomes their asset and it sits in their asset register rather than still staying in, in stock on my side. Yeah. yeah, that's absolutely correct. And that's a, a sort of nice contextual uh response to what we have here because strictly speaking from a technical standpoint in halo um this is an asset already right so if i click into this there is an asset record in halo uh, for the laptop that i've just created but as chris mentions in practice this would really be uh, equated to stock and uh, while it is still an asset in halo you wouldn't think of it as an asset in the more conventional sense until this has been shipped to the customer location. Um, this is uh, the, the mechanisms that we have put in place here for uh, serialized products. It's primarily a way for us to say, right, well, you're bringing, you're bringing a bunch of laptops into the warehouse. You need to scan the barcodes uh, and the serial numbers. We need to store them somewhere. So that when uh, someone goes to deliver a laptop to the customer, they can actually pick from the list of serial numbers and pick one out and there's that full audit trail. Um, and we've done that by incorporating assets into that process. Uh, and then the actual manipulation of the stock quantities is based on where the assets are in Halo. So um, for example, We've got our, our one in stock here because uh, Morgan's laptop is currently at um, the warehouse. 
But if I move that to, you know, Mario and Luigi's, our stock has now been depleted to zero. Um, and our stock history denotes that the uh, the laptop has been moved to Mario and Luigi's pizza place. Um, so uh, with that in mind, it's worth noting that the quantity in stock of a serialized product equates to the number of assets held at stock locations in Halo where the assets have been created from stock manipulation in Halo. Adding, uh, adding stock, receiving stock, maybe. Yeah, and exactly, and I think that <clears throat> that comes down to exactly you know what I said. So it, it it's an it's an asset for all intents and purposes, but it doesn't become an asset at the customer site until you you well until you move it to that customer. Now now that laptop, Morgan's laptop, now belongs to Mario and Luigi's because at this point I've probably sold it to them and you're right and then it shows it's out of stock because I because I only had that one in stock and I now no longer have it in my warehouse um it's now you know sat on Mario's desk or Luigi's desk um Mario he bought it he he likes it so we put it on Mario's desk and he is now saying here it is it's on my desk it's now belongs to Mario belongs to that pizza company it no longer is anything that i have um i have in stock so um and i, I like it i like the way that this is done it's it it kind of you know it makes it really clear and i i'm hoping to our viewers it's making it really clear as to kind of you know an asset is and i think a lot of people get confused by this they think an asset and stock are the same thing and they're not you know an asset an asset is is only an asset when when it's been taken out of stock effectively and it's been put somewhere else it's been installed or it's been something else then it's then it's an asset yeah yeah absolutely correct yeah um yeah cool yeah okay so um just taking a, a step back quickly we saw that when we were adding uh receiving the stock for the laptop we had this window pop up where we could enter an asset tag and a serial number the options that we have in here are configurable and they are set Firstly, within configuration items and stock control. So if we jump back over there. And um, so firstly, we have this asset serialization field. So change that to purchase cost. Go back here, close that. Uh, might have to refresh. So now that's purchase cost, and that is a field that is uh, added to all asset types, or all yeah, all asset types when receiving stock for those serialized products. So this is your sort of additional field. I like to keep that as serial number um, because, uh, and might be jumping the gun a little bit here, but if you start to think about how this all ties together, um, you're obviously gonna have uh, the, the, the workflow in reality, will probably look something like you purchase a laptop from Dell, um, it gets delivered into your warehouse. You receive stock of it. So it's now uh, an asset in Halo at a stock location. Um, you'll then install your RMM agent on that laptop. Uh, the RMM integration with Halo will recognize that there's a new device uh, to be imported. Uh, but of course, you don't, you've already got an asset in Halo uh, that equates to that new device that's been picked up in your RMM. So it's important to make sure that uh, you've got your asset serialization field here that maps to one of the fields that you would have configured in your RMM integration. Um, yeah. For example, if I'm using Enable Insight, 
I need to make sure that the serial number is being mapped over from enable. So assets created in Halo from a stock edition, uh, subsequent to that, the RMM agents installed on the laptop, the integration between the RMM and Halo recognizes that there's a new laptop to be in, or new asset to be imported. Uh, upon the import, we recognize that there is um, a, a matching field in our RMM integration, serial number, um, such that when the asset's being imported from your RMM into Halo, uh, there's already an asset in Halo with the same serial number, meaning that you don't have duplicate assets. Uh, so just something to, to bear in mind there. Uh, and that is uh, the importance of making sure that you have that asset serialization field here. You can also uh, adjust the, uh, this, the other field, which we saw to be asset tag at asset type level, um, which means that each different asset type, so each different type of serialized product can have their own unique serialization field. And then on top of that, there is that global field that we just saw in configuration items and stock control. Um, hopefully that's making sense. A little bit of a mouthful. Yep. <clears throat> Following? Okay, good. Perfect sense, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so um, we've seen uh, what a stock location is um, and how how to mark sites in Halo with stock locations. We've had a look at manipulating stock for non-serialized products. We've had a look at manipulating stock for serialized products and how to mark a product as being a serialized product. We know what the stock quantity of a serialized product means, namely the number of assets held at stock locations created from uh, stock additions. Uh, and we've seen how we can manipulate the serialization fields that appear when receiving stock. So uh, everything that we've done there is, is all very much applicable. However, this is not how you're going to be manipulating stock uh, in practice. What you're going to be doing, what you're going to be doing in reality, is you're going to be creating uh, proposals and sales orders and purchase orders. You're going to be uh, adding products to tickets and delivering them and billing for them from tickets. So, uh, I think we'll to keep this short and sweet. We will uh, wrap this session up here, and then in the next session we'll have a look at everything that we've just discussed now in a bit more of a, a practical example and some practical workflows. Um, how does that sound, Chris? Absolutely. You know, I think that's that's a really good place to to stop. I think it's given a really good, um, you know, very sort of basic broad outline of, of what asset or what um, stock is, what an asset is, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and I think, um, so in the next video, we'll then talk about, as you say, kind of how to bring all of this together how to put this onto a purchase order, how to bring the stuff into stock. Um, and then, you know, and then the big one I, I get asked all the time is how do we then, um, now we've got these items in stock. So we've got this laptop or router or switch or whatever it is that's in stock with a serial number that we now want to sell to a customer um, via a ticket, or we just want to sell it to a customer via an invoice or something like that. How do we get that added to, to the invoice, to the ticket, that kind of stuff. So we'll cover that off in, in the next video as well. And, and we'll then kind of, um, you know, wrap up our um, our stuff control area. So yeah, um, as always, Morgan, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Um, that was a really great session. And uh, as always, I appreciate you. I appreciate, uh, you know, Halo letting me use you for these videos and always appreciate your time. So thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, always happy to help the community. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Yeah, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.